<sighs> How are you, vinyl community? <laughs> this is Hubtunes. I am Mike. I just recorded this entire video. <laughs> I did a 20 minute video, and right when I was kind of getting ready to finish, my phone said I had <laughs> no storage left and it deleted the whole video. So, we're gonna start this over again. This is a concert review. First of all, you know what? After that, I need a. To... Guys, this beer is freaking awesome. I've talked about this beer before. This is a pistachio cream ale uh, from Around the Bend Brewing. Pick this up. If you're at Binnie's or something, grab this. This stuff is so damn good. Okay, let's do this all over again. So this is a concert review of my favorite active band, and that is Wilco. Uh, I was getting ready to do this video, and I didn't, I thought about it. I'd never done a discography review on Wilco. 300 freaking videos, and I've never done a discography review on my favorite band. I don't even think I've done a concert review, and I've seen them over 30 times. So, um, yeah, I don't know. So here we go. Uh... A week before the show, Wilco announces as the tour is, their tour is closing that they're going to do a surprise show at uh, the Metro here in Chicago. The Metro is a small venue. It holds 1,100 people, I believe. And it's it's legendary here. It's got really good sound. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great place. I've seen Smashing Pumpkins there, Cheap Trick, uh, R.E.M. I've seen so many so many bands at this venue it's it's wonderful uh, my only my only complaint is sometimes they they oversell and it can be really unbearable i just recently saw the lemonheads there and it was so crowded you could not move it was it was un, unbearable and i actually kind of left <laughs> after about an hour and a half uh they were almost done so it, it wasn't like it, but anyway it, it can be unbearable, and it can also be really hot in there. In the summer, it gets super freaking hot in there. But this show was perfect. They um, So they announced the show. I'm the nerd who buys posters. Uh, this is not the best poster in the world, um, because they only had a week. You know, Wilco usually... Uh, Wilco will sell a poster, a, a show-specific poster in every city they go to, you know, and they're usually all different designs, and they're really good. They have great artwork uh, for their show posters. I have a bunch of them. I should show someday. Uh, so this one, not not the best poster, but because they only had a week's notice, I still bought it, and it was still $35. I know. Uh, but some of their posters, actually, some of the really cool posters, the, the bigger ones, they they'll be 50 bucks at least uh, at a show, but th they're totally worth it. They're beautiful pieces of artwork. I should show those because I got some beautiful ones right there that you can't see. Uh, so Wilco, I, um, I discovered them many, many years ago. My friend David Laird, who does not watch this, a uh, great guy. He took me to maybe one of my first, maybe one of my first Wilco shows. I was Wilco evolved out of Uncle Tupelo. Uncle Tupelo was Jeff Tweedy, and and uh, Jay Farrar were the main main uh, characters in the band. They split up. Jay Farrar went and made Sunvolt. Tweedy went on to do Volt. Uh, Wilco. I like Sunvolt. I I gravitated much more towards Wilco. Uh, it was just uh, I don't know. I, I like Sunvolt. Uh, they're they're good. They're great live. Uh, but Wilco was definitely my my jam, and uh, this album came out. Their first album, AM. It's got Casino Queen on here. Um, Box full of letters is a great song. This is a terrific record, but it didn't grab me. It didn't grab me like their next album would. And that album is the double masterpiece being there. This album is freaking fantastic. This is my second favorite Wilco record. It is a double album there. It is not bloated. There is, it is chock full of great, great songs from start to finish. This is probably my second favorite Wilco record. And it's the album that really, really got me just gaga over them. Uh, this is, um, I have, I didn't pull out everything that I have. I have multiple variants. I have 
deluxe versions. I have box sets. I have just everything. Uh, this one is on black vinyl, but I think I also have this on brown vinyl. Uh, really, really good. Great record. If you want to start with a, a Wilco record, I might, I might start here. I, I think this is a really good starting point if you've never heard of Wilco. Uh, next up is their their masterpiece, their absolute masterpiece. This is probably my second favorite album of all time. Uh, number one is London Calling. I just adore London, London Calling. This is probably right behind it. It could be number one. I don't know. But when this album came out, I was absolutely blown away. Um, this is Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. You got the Marina Towers, famous... Uh, Famous buildings here in Chicago. They're not as nice as people think they are. I've been in several units in the building and they're very, very tiny, and very, very cramped, and very, very expensive. But these are at the, uh, the, the House of Blues is right at the base of th these two towers. And um, this is a wonderful record. This is, uh, like I said, this is their masterpiece with Jay Bennett in the band. And um, yeah, oh, I'm out of order. <laughs> This this is the album that, I mean, I just, I'm out of order, god damn it. You know why? Because I had to start this video all over again. Well, we'll just keep going. Eh, who cares, right? Okay, I'm out of order. Okay. So, this is, <laughs> this is uh, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. An absolute Stone Cold masterpiece. Unbelievable record. Um, the album that came right before that <laughs> is... Summer Teeth. This is Wilco's second album. Uh, also, uh, just a terrific, terrific record. Probably, you know, my third favorite. Uh, just a chock full of hits. No, well, hits. I don't know if they've ever really had a hit. Uh, but just concert classics, stuff that they play all the time uh, on this record. Really, really good. And then next, uh, well, then, and then Yankee Hook. You guys follow me. Then A Ghost is Born comes out. This is a great record. Uh, Jay Bennett has now left the band and they um, they record this and it, it, it's good, it's, it's great. I mean, this has got some unbelievable songs. You know, Spiders and Muzzle of Bees, Hummingbird, uh, Handshake Drugs, just a classic also. When this album came out, I saw this tour. I bet I saw this tour seven or eight times. I, um, at, one time I had a friend who lived in downtown Paris and I planned a trip to Paris around Wilco playing in Paris. And so I flew over to Paris, stayed at his place for free. And um, yeah, I got I got to see him in Paris. The place was half full and um, yeah, I was right on the right on the rail looking up at Tweety and uh, I was wearing my Cubs hat and he like looked down at me and he's like, and I was like, yeah, Rogers Park. And he's like, what? <laughs> so it, it was fun. It, 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 was, it, was a, it was a great time and a great time to be a fan of this band because they were, they were just starting to show you exactly what they could do and what, what they would be. And this is, I mean, these three albums, right, four albums right in a row are just, I, I, I don't, not many bands have a run like that of four albums in a row. Uh, this might also be out of order. Yeah, I went out of order again. <laughs> this is the uh, Mermaid Avenue um, um, set. There's three records in the set. Uh, one, two, and three, obviously. Uh, Jay Bennett is in the band for these. And um, these are um, Woody Guthrie lyrics and Wilco and Billy Bragg uh, put, put them to music and they did a hell of a job. Uh, the rumor always is that Billy Bragg is pissed off at Wilco because they took the good songs. And um, it, that might be a little true, <laughs> but uh, the Billy Bragg songs on here are wonderful also. Uh, he, he did a terrific job. I'm, I'm a Billy Bragg fan. I, I, I think he's great. Um, so if he's mad about that, I uh, wouldn't be. But yeah, there's some great Wilco songs. Airline to Heaven and California Stars. And um, yeah, this is absolutely terrific. Three volumes. Not easy to get on vinyl. Uh, next up. Okay, we're back in order. <laughs> this is Sky Blue Sky. A lot of Wilco fans love, 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 love this record. Um, I'm not as in love with it as a lot of people. Uh, I do enjoy it. It's got some great songs on it. Uh, Impossible Germany is on here. It, it's a really good album. Um, but 
it's middle of the pack for me. Um, not not a, not that it's bad. Uh, this next one, I see. I don't even know if I'm going in order. This one, yeah, this one came next. Uh, this is the whole love. This is back to upbeat, more like um, a little bit more like summer teeth. Uh, high energy. There's some rockers on here. Uh, it's it's good. There were some great videos that came out with this record. I, I remember at the time I was really into some of the videos. Uh, really solid. Another solid solid record from them. And next up, Wilco the album. This is the album Wilco. Uh, it's it's okay. It's not my favorite. It's got some it's got some okay stuff on there. You know, it's not it's not the best. I love the artwork. It might be my favorite Wilco album cover, uh, and the inside photo is great. Um, again, probably not real high on my list. Um, middle of the pack. And then next is an album that I absolutely love, and I think it gets overlooked in the Wilco catalog. I think it's underrated, and that is Star Wars. I have multiple variants of this. I have white, I have black, I have red. I, it's stupid how many variants I have. Uh, all of them sealed, <laughs> too, except for one playable one. Uh, the rest are sealed. Weird. Uh, great album. I love, love, love Nels Klein's guitar work on this album. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Jeff Tweedy's guitar work on here is also very, very good. Uh, really, really, this is probably number four in, in, in their catalog in, uh, as far as my uh, albums that I like. Um, the next one is probably one that I know when it came out, everyone hated it. And um, I think this is Schmilko. <laughs> Um, it, it is, um, lyrically, I think it might be some of Jeff Tweedy's best writing. Song-wise, mm, it's okay, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, I think, I, I've revisited it, I revisited it actually last week, you know, uh, they did not play anything from this record. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Definitely not high on my list. It might be, actually, it might be my least favorite Wilco record. <laughs> uh, I love the artwork. I actually have a t-shirt with all of this on there. I, I love this artist. I forget her name. Uh, somebody will maybe put in the comments. But great, great artwork. I also have multiple variants of this. I think I have, I have all the colors. I have uh, orange, green, yellow, blue, pink, and black. And white. And this is the orange one. Uh, yeah. And those are all sealed. <laughs> <laughs> freak so then they come out with what i would say most wilco fans consider their worst album i do not um i like this album this is ode to joy it is complicated it is dark it is um layered there is a i love the production on this a lot i think that people who don't like this record have not really really sat down and listened to it the songwriting is terrific. The lyrics are deep and important. Uh, it, it's so good. Um, you know, where does it rank in the whole scheme of things? I don't know. You know, it's not going to be up there with Yankee Foxtrot. It's not going to be up there with Ghost is Born. That's for sure. Um, but I think in, in years to come, people are going to look back on this record and be like, oh, that's really, really good. It's very understated. I was at a show... <laughs> On that tour, they, they played the whole thing, and then Tw Tweety says at the end, he says, he says, so you guys thought Schmilko sucked. <laughs> How do you like this album? And uh, the whole place went crazy. It was funny. Um, so they did, they did release two albums right in a row where people were kind of like, uh oh, they don't, they've lost it. A lot of fans, I, they lost a lot of fans with those those two albums. They didn't lose me though. Did I tell you what beer I'm drinking? Around the Bend, Pistachio Cream Ale. Shit's good, man. Okay, uh, and then they come. we come to uh, last year. This vinyl actually came out this year in 2023. It came out in like January or February, but the proper release was 2022. This is Cruel Country. This is a great record. Uh, it is a double record. It is Wilco 
it, it's country Wilco. Only like Wilco can do it. It is wonderful. I just adore this record. It is long. Some would say it's bloated. I could agree with that. Um, there's a couple of songs I think that could be left off. Um, but I don't know which ones. So I'm not going to make that judgment. It's a beautiful package. Um, great artwork. I love the artwork. And then inside you get more doilies. And um, this is just on black vinyl, but it's got some great photos in, inside of the band. And um, you even get little postcards. Mm -hmm. Shit. Uh, it's a wonderful record. I, I listened to it the other day, and... I think it's absolutely terrific. The, 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 the opener, I Am My Mother, is just a, a wonderful Tweety song. They played that when I saw them uh, the other night. Cruel Country, the title track is great. Uh, just, just a really, really good record. And then they follow it up with their most recent album, and that is Cousin. I love the artwork on this, too. They got some really interesting uh, cover artwork. This is wonderful. This is more upbeat. There's more layering. There is more guitar work. This is produced by Kate LeBon. This is the first time they brought in an outside uh, producer. Uh, it's been quite a while. I don't remember the last one. It might have been a Ghost is Born, maybe, with Jim O'Rourke. I'm not sure. But it's been, it's been a long time. Tweedy's done most of the producing himself. Uh, she did a great job. I'm I'm not super familiar with Kate LeBon. Uh, I've heard some of her music. Uh, she's really interesting. I, I, I need to dig more into her uh, catalog. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful record. And that's their most recent record. It just came out a few uh, months ago. Um, there is a live record. I didn't, I didn't pull out everything. Uh, this is a live record. This is a box set of Kicking Television recorded here in Chicago. Uh, it is uh, here in Chicago at the Vic Theater. Uh, it was a four-night run. They recorded and filmed the entire four nights. Uh, the film has never, ever been released. Uh, apparently, Tweedy does not like it, and, you know, if, if it, ain't getting, it ain't getting past him. So maybe someday we'll see. It'll see light of day. I tell you what, though, it was four nights of absolute ecstasy. The, the the Vic Theater is one of my favorite spots in Chicago to see a concert. And I had the perfect spot every freaking night. And it, it was just wonderful. If you want to know what a live Wilco show is like, get Kicking Television. It, it is a perfect representation of what a live Wilco show is. And and at this time. I mean, it still holds up. It, it really is great. Uh, there is, You don't have to get the box set. There is another... Um, there is a two-disc set, so you don't have to get all this. But, um, yeah, Kicking Television, live in Chicago, the Vic Theater. So, this is an album review, or a, uh, <laughs> a concert review. So let's talk about the concert. They are promoting this album, Cousin. They are, uh, they announced, I told you earlier, they announced this is a pop-up show to celebrate the end of the tour. Jeff Tweedy is having uh, hip replacement surgery. And um, they're going to be off the road for a little bit. Although, just the other day, he announced that he's doing an acoustic show in December. So he's already planning to be back on doing shows. Uh, hip replacement surgery isn't what, you know, our grandparents used to get in the 70s and 60s. <laughs> you don't die like two months after. <laughs> it's pretty uh, common. And he's young, so he should bounce back pretty quick. Uh, he was hobbling around. He was really hobbling around. Uh, he looked like he was in pain. So um, good for him. Get that done and get get, it, get on with your life because he'll be fine. Uh, the show was at the Vic the or at the Metro here in Chicago, and uh, the place holds eleven hundred people. Great place. I walked in. I got my usual spot, stage left. I got my double doers and water, and uh, everybody around me was great. Uh, very awesome crowd, uh, except for one dude. One dude was. FaceTiming his girlfriend, who was like in California or something, he FaceTimed her half the show. Half the freaking show. And he was like in front of everybody, and he's holding his phone up. And all you can see is like this woman, and she's like walking in a park. It was really annoying. Uh, but other than that one bag, everything else was great. Uh, the sound there is terrific. It's a very small venue. They did not oversell it. A lot of times I see shows there, they oversell. Uh, 
So it was definitely heavy on the new album. In fact, I'm looking at they opened the album with the the show with the album opener, Infinite Surprise, which is a great opener. Um, man, I think they did everything except for two songs on here. Everything but two songs. So it was very new album heavy. I was totally fine with that. I love this record. Uh, and I hadn't heard any of it live. Uh, so I was in heaven. I think everybody was. The new songs just rolled right in with the old songs. They did a, you know, a couple songs from Yankee Foxtrot. They did a couple songs from... Uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> Sky Blue Sky. It, it just... Everything rolled into one. It was really, really well done. The highlight of the show, though, came from this album. It was a song called Bird Without a Tail, which is my favorite song on the record. Holy crap. I felt like I was at a Grateful Dead Pink Floyd show. This this song, they stretched it out for 15 minutes. It went in weird, weird territory It and then came right back full force. It was a great, great version. I had been waiting to hear that song live. I had not heard it, and it was the highlight of the show for me. Uh, they did a couple of encores, and then they bailed. And um, when people, after the after the show, I saw, you know, people were posting the encore, the set list that they took off the stage. And there were supposed to be three more songs, but they didn't play them. I think, I think Tweety was done. He, he was visibly limping, and his voice was very, he, he sounded great. But you could tell he was struggling a little bit. He was drinking a lot of, uh, it looked like soda. He's not a drinker, so it was definitely soda or tea or something. Um, he, he was struggling vocally, but he sounded great. I mean, every time he sang, I didn't really notice. Uh, but in between every song, he was drinking. So he had something going on with his throat. It was the last show of the tour. It's been a long tour, he said. And... Um, yeah, it was Wilco live in Chicago. Like I said, I've seen them over 30 times. I've been very, very blessed to see them in Paris. I saw them in um, Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and, I, and I've seen them in, in Austin. But other than that, everything's been in Chicago. I, I'm very lucky to be able to see this band. They're from Chicago. Uh, I'm very, very lucky to be able to see them so many times and in such small venues over the years. Uh, it's been very, very blessed. So uh, that's it. Uh, if you guys get a chance to go see Wilco, go do it. Uh, if you're going to start with an album, I would start with being there and then work your way through the through the catalog. Uh, and if you're going to if you want to know what live Wilco's like check out the kicking television record it's great it's it's a perfect example of what this band uh, is live and you will definitely definitely enjoy it so that's it 23 minutes <laughs> actually it's been about 45 because i've done this twice questions comments snide remarks down below and i will talk to you soon bye